Alright, hi again everyone. Uh, so, I also wanted to record this lecture today uh, just so that you can kind of, so that we can kind of get it out of the way uh, because I know we're pretty far behind schedule in terms of topics that I was hoping to cover. Uh, and next week you'll have your beam bending lab, so this will, this is kind of the, the tail end of, of uh, sorry, next week you'll have your beam buckling lab, so this is the tail end of, of beam theory that you'll need to know for this class, or that you should know for this class. So uh, this lecture is going to specifically talk about plasticity in beams. So uh, plasticity in beams. So what we'll talk about First, actually, is we'll go through our derivation for how we get to the to the beam bending stress moment equation. So, um, if you remember, I'll, I'll kind of roll it back a little bit. Uh, first, so I, I want to first talk about again our elastic stress derivation or elastic stress bending relationship derivation. So I'm going to look back at a beam just with some here. I'm going to specifically make this a, a square or rectangular cross section. Going down. Um, let's see. Okay. It's still kind of in focus. Again, apologies for the poor quality. This is done on a webcam, which is, I know, not exactly ideal, but it's what we have to work with. So um, here now, this beam is going to have some width B, some height here H, um, and oh, if we can even see those. Um, and so what I'm going to do now is defining the x direction of the beam to be along here, the z direction of the beam to be down, and the y direction of the beam to be uh, in the, the b direction, so the y corresponds to the b. Um, if you remember back in our torque, um, torque shear stress derivation, um, we drew an infinitesimal unit and then took an integral along that. Here we're going to basically be using that same idea. So um, in this beam I'm going to draw some infinitesimal unit in the cross section. Uh, I'm going to call this unit now some dz. Um, and then what I want to do is say I have a beam with some bending moment applied to it, um, some moment m applied to it, I want to figure out how the stress relates to it. So um, say I have some beam bending. I want to know what the stress internally, how the stress internally relates to bending moment. Uh, and we'd already written this equation out, but now I'll kind of show more formally where that comes from. So um, here now on this surface, there's some there's some bending moment around uh, corresponding to when I cut open that surface. Big M. Um, I know that that M now is going to be balanced out um, by a force times a distance. So equals uh, bending moment is force times distance. Now the force is going to be um, the force relative to the neutral axis. So if I have a bending moment going around here, uh, it's going to be counteracted by axially in the face, there's going to be some stress going in or stress going out um, in the through direction of the beam. So um, that, that axial stress in the beam is what's going to be counteracting this. And here, uh, D is distance from the, the neutral axis of the beam. We here, we're going to assume now that our stress state 
um, varies linearly. So in the uh, elastic region of the beam, or when when the beam is still being deformed elastically, um, here along the z direction, my stress just varies linearly within here. So now there's some at a maximum here. This is an h over 2. Um, actually, let's define this as our z positive at some h over 2, um, some negative h over 2, I have uh, a corresponding, uh, I guess, here I'm drawing my, my bending moments kind of mixed up, um, but it doesn't matter too much. Uh, here I, I have some sigma max, as long as my beam is symmetric, that stress is the same on both sides. So here it would be negative sigma max, uh, positive sigma max. So tension compression in the neutral axis of the beam at the middle point for a symmetric beam, for a rectangular beam, that stress is going to be zero. So we're going to say our stress uh, here, stress is equal to some sigma max z over uh, here now I'm going to use C to kind of simplify things where I'm going to say C is just equal to H over 2. So this, this beam has a height H where H is also equal to 2C. Um, and this is, I, I could be using H over 2 here. I, I'll kind of use them interchangeably. It's just instead of writing an H over 2 and an H squared over 4 or H cubed over 6, it's, um, I'll replace it with a C for the sake of cleaning up some of the some of the analysis. So now my moment is force, so force is stress in the x direction um, times the area in that direction. Uh, D is distance from the neutral axis again. So here this M, uh, I'm going to be integrating it along the side now. So uh, m force times distance, this is sigma a uh, z effectively. So this integral uh, from negative c to c of sigma a z, where a here, I'm going to be taking this as my width b and my infinitesimal width, or my infinitesimal height dz. So this is uh, B D Z. So this is assuming that the the stress doesn't vary along the the width of the beam, along the y direction of the beam. Um, now I also know that this is going to be symmetric. So uh, it's uh, the the integral of this here now. If I'm taking my z to be in the middle from uh, it's going to be negative from negative c to 0, and then positive from 0 to c, or kind of flips depending on exactly how you're defining your convention. But either way, when I when I take this integral, it's going to end up being uh, double whatever the, the sum is on both sides. So what I can do to simplify this is say this is actually just 2 uh, integral from 0 to c due to the symmetry here. Uh, now this is 2 integral from 0 to c of sigma b z uh, dz, where b dz is my area, z is the distance from the neutral plane, and sigma is my stress. Sigma now stress, I know here I'm going to assume that stress is varying linearly, so sigma equals sigma max z over c, where c is again the distance, uh, excuse me, again that max distance here from the neutral plane. Um, so I can say my moment is uh, replacing sigma here with sigma max. Uh, I know b doesn't, b is a constant, c is a constant. This is now 2 sigma max 
uh, B over C. This is the integral now from 0 to C of Z squared dz, where one of the z's is coming from here, one of the z's is coming from here. This 0 to C d squared dz, or 2b, um, it turns out to be, we can, we can simplify this, this is an area moment of inertia, so our, our second moment of area, where I'm going to call this i is equal to 2b integral from 0 to h over 2 uh, z squared dz. Uh, this is our uh, definition here of, of second moment of area, which for a rectangle with width b, a rectangular cross section with width b and h, height h, uh, this is b h cubed over 12, which this should hopefully be familiar at this point. Um, so what this whole thing ends up at is m is equal to uh, sigma max i over c, or um, where now I can I can go back and replace my my sigma max is equal to uh, my stress times c over z. If I plug that in there, or yeah, I can say uh, sigma max over c is stress over z. I can say this m is also equal to uh, sigma i over z, or stress is um, mz over i, which this should be our familiar equation for the relationship between stress axially and the beam and bending moment. So the assumptions that go into this are primarily that uh, the stress is symmetric around the midpoint and that um, the here the, the stress is linear inside the beam. Zero at the neutral plane and varying linearly in here. And that's how we end up back at our elastic stress, stress bending moment derivation. Um, so by taking these infinitesimal units and integrating them up. Now, if we want to instead, now if, if this beam bends a little bit too much, if it starts going into the plastic regime, uh, what we have instead in our plastic regime, so plastic, plastic bending, uh, is instead of our stress varying linearly in the cross section, um, where this now is is again our our uh, cross section here. This is uh, neutral plane here in the center. Um, instead of varying linearly in this cross section, what this is going to look like. Let's make this bigger. Uh, I have some stress here. Again, I'm going to call this my positive z direction going down. Um, is this beam is going to be linear within a certain regime? Because uh, again, the the stress in the middle is very is low, zero in the center. But if I bend it too much, eventually it'll become plastic, and I'll have some point here where it starts to yield where this now is some yield strength of the material. Uh, let's draw this out. Here, uh, is that even visible? Maybe, let's draw this slightly bigger. It's my yield strength here. Oh, it's still super fuzzy. This is not the best webcam. Um, oh well. We will have to deal with it. And so this happens, this yielding point happens at some height zy, which is um, 
the yielding distance from the neutral point, or the, the distance of, of the start of yielding from the neutral plane. This, again, we're going to assume is symmetric, so negative z, y here on the other side. This is going to be a negative sigma yield. Um, and now what I want to do to figure out, what I'm, what I'm going to try to do is figure out the bending moment relationship between this axial strain, uh, or this the, the bending the bending moment relationship between, yes, the axial stress and the bending moment now when it's plastically deformed. Um, there's also, so one assumption I'm going to put in here uh, in this derivation is that this is elastic, perfectly plastic. So uh, this, what we're basically saying is for our stress strain relationship, uh, this is an elastic, perfectly plastic curve. So once it reaches that yield point, it just kind of plateaus. Uh, this, we could say, has some hardening relationship or softening relationship or, or whatever. Um, but we're going to here, just for the sake of simplicity in our, in our beam bending analysis, uh, we're only going to look at the elastic, perfectly plastic case. <laughs> So um, there's also one more special case. Um, basically, when I when I start deforming this significantly, uh, this zy the the more plastically I deform this, the smaller the zy is going to get. At some point, the yield the zy the yield distance from the neutral plane will be at the edge of this thing. And as I continue to plastically deform it, as I continue to bend it more that z is going to come down. Eventually I'll end up at a special case where um, this z is kind of, this zy is kind of very very tiny uh, to the point where we can say that the entire sample has yielded. This is now our z. stress. Um, and so when, when we get to this point, we say that my, my z, y is significantly smaller than my c. So then I can just assume that the entire beam has yielded. So it's all, uh, it's all at some yield strength here and all at some yield strength here in compression and tension. Uh, this is also assuming, as a note, that the yield strength in tension and compression is symmetric, which, if you remember, that isn't always the case for a beam, but here, again, we're, we're making this simplification assumption that it's elastic, perfectly plastic, and that uh, tension and compression yield is the same. What this looks like in the beam um, is, say we have a three-point bending beam. so. Initially, initially, I have a beam that looks like this, and I'm applying some load P to it. Um, the whole thing is going to be elastically deforming. It's going to deflect downward some amount, um, where this P is less than some some critical p p i where where yielding will start um, or what when the for the critical force that I have to apply to cause yielding to start if I keep going if I keep applying higher and higher loads eventually this beam will start to plastically yield um, so now if this pi is less than p, or p is greater than some pi, and it's less than some critical p, p naught. Um, I'm going to say here now, the the top and bottom of this beam will have started to yield. So if you remember now in our in our three point bending configuration, the maximum moment is in the center of the beam, um, and the moment is zero at the end. So the, max, the moment here and here is zero, 
the moment here is along the central plane of the maximum, um, but then it's also a function of the, the radius here. So um, you'll get a yielding surface that looks something like this. There'll be some plastic zone on the top and some plastic zone on the bottom that started to yield. Um, and eventually, in three-point bending, what you'll get is that plastic moment will go all the way through. So you'll end up with something that looks like this. Where this now we this this state we say that the beam has started to form a plastic hinge. So this is when my applied load P is greater than some final critical load P that'll cause this whole thing to yield. And this, this black part is, is a yield surface. Now the maximum moment is in the center. The second that maximum moment hits this point where it started to, um, where the whole beam is effectively yielded, this in the beam cross section or in, in the beam is actually where the yielding will be taking place for, for a three-point bending configuration. So when we get to this point, this state s starts happening, kind of, it, it ends up localizing. And if we have an elastic, perfectly plastic material, this bending localization will end up with, you, at this point of, highest, of the highest moment, you'll get a lot of deformation in here. So this, this will uh, relegate most of the deformation <laughs> So, as an example, as an example, I have a, a paper clip that I'll that I'll show. Um, so here, when I deform this paper clip a little bit, it's able to kind of bounce back. Uh, when I start deforming it more, it plastically deforms a little bit. There's actually some residual strain, um, which I may talk about at a later date. Um, but then if I, if I really start to deform it, you'll notice that most of the deformation gets localized to a certain point in this thing. So most of, most of this deformation is actually happening very locally in the paper clip. Uh, and that's because once I start to form this plastic hinge, again, that, that deformation will kind of get stuck, not get stuck, but there'll be one kind of weak zone where most of that plastic deformation is, is occurring. Um, and I end up with a plastic hinge, um, is the term for it. Doo -doo -doo. Yep. So uh, this is basically our beam. Not exact, not a perfect three-point bending. That's sort of a our three-point bending um, with now our plastic hinge there. Um, or again, here, let's see if we can actually bend that. This would be, again, our, our three-point bending configuration. And you see most of the deformation stays within there. Even though I'm, I'm kind of applying a center, center load here, most of the plasticity kind of stays right there. So um, let's actually go through some of the math and see where this would happen. So let's look at this case first. So the case where the whole beam hasn't entirely yielded. For this, now, uh, what I have in terms of my setup, so if you remember, I, I still have this, this equation generally still holds. Moment is that integral from negative c to c of sigma a z. Um, now my sigma is going to be a piecewise function. So uh, sigma is still linear in the elastic regime, or still linear in the, in the center of the beam in our, in our elastic regime, and then some constant sigma y as I go out further. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to assume symmetry again. So I'm only going to take the integral from 0 to, to c, or 0 to h over 2, uh, and I'm going to multiply that by 2. I'm going to say my moment now is equal to 2 times the integral from 0 to zy, where this is now my yield, uh, the yield distance, the, d the distance where 
the yielding will start from the center point um, of sigma b z d z and then beyond that plus 2 times the integral from z y to c or to h over 2. Now my stress is just my yield stress because I'm going to assume that this is elastic perfectly plastic so I'm not going to worry about um, I'm not going to worry about any hardening or anything. This is now sigma y, uh, b, z, dz. Here, this stress I know varies linearly up to this point. So my stress here uh, in the elastic zone, sigma is actually um, sigma y at at z y, and then z over z y. So it varies linearly from Oh, this thing is very fuzzy. Um, yeah, hopefully you guys can... Oh, there it goes. Kind of focused a little bit. Hopefully you can see this without too much problem. Um, but, so it, it hits a max at sigma y when, uh, when z is zy and is 0 when z is 0. So here we can plug this value in now. I can say this is equal to 2... Uh, uh, pulling some stuff out to sigma y b over z y because these are all constants. This is the integral from zero to z y of now z squared d z. This is plus two sigma y here b integral from z y to c of z d z. Um, now uh, this ends up being two thirds. Um, yes, uh, two thirds b sigma y z y squared. Uh, plus b sigma y c squared minus z y squared. So here we're going to make another big assumption and I'm going to assume that even though the stress here is plateauing in the system, it, it reaches some sigma y and then plateaus, uh, I'm going to assume that the strain in the system is linear. So regardless of how much I've deformed it, um, the amount of strain here through the cross section is going to be still, still just a function of z. So my strain, uh, my strain, let's say the strain at the top most point, my strain at c over c is equal to epsilon over z, um, or I can say um, the strain at zy. So now I'm trying to trying to figure out what the zy is, um, what the what the distance from the neutral axis is going to be. Um, I can say this zy is equal to uh, epsilon y c over epsilon c where epsilon c is the strain at the, again, the strain at the outermost, at the top or bottom of the beam, um, divided by the height of the beam, my zy is then this. Um, or I can simplify this using constitutive relationships, and I can say this epsilon y is sigma yield over e, uh, and then this now is c over epsilon c. Uh, so I'm going to rewrite my whole moment equation now in, in terms of this using using this simplification. Let's see if it defuzzes itself. Uh, this is not ideal. I don't know why this webcam keeps going in and out of focus. Nope. Maybe it won't. I don't know. Um, okay. Again, I'm just going to have to live with the, the slightly low quality. So what this m ends up being when I plug 
this simplification in uh, is my now I have m equals b sigma y c squared times 1 minus I'm going to say this is sigma y divided by e over 3 epsilon c squared both of these are squared so this is taking um, this is plugging in uh, these values for my z y uh, then I can I can go ahead and, and simplify this whole thing uh, to look like this so this is my bending moment uh, strain relationship so the relationship between the C, the, the, the strain at the outer edge um, and the, the yield strength of the material. So um, now there's a couple special cases. So um, from this equation Okay, there's a couple special cases of plasticity. Special cases of plasticity. Um, the first special case is the onset of yielding, where now my, my zy is equal to c, or that's equal to my h over 2 which means the my epsilon c the the strain at the outer edge of the sample is equal to the yield strain which is equal to sigma y over e so when i plug in this simplification i can say uh, this now happens at some critical load pi um, the the bending moment, so m equals, just to write it out again, b sigma y c squared times 1 minus sigma y over e uh, squared divided by 3 epsilon c squared. Um, this ends up simplifying to uh, plugging in epsilon c is sigma y over e, 1 minus a third. This goes to uh, 2 thirds b sigma y c squared. Or I can take c is h over 2 uh, and simplify this a little bit using my i. This is sigma y i over um, h over 2, or c. Uh, and so this is one special relationship when when the bending moment is equal to this value when it's equal to the yield strength i over h over 2 um, then you know plasticity is going to start in the beam so this is where plasticity starts um, this is still like super fuzzy I don't know why it's not refocusing at all apologies for the poor quality um, there's another special case now when the beam is fully plastic. So um, two full plasticity, um, we can say this is at some load P0 or P0. Uh, and for this special case, I know that uh, the yield strain is much less uh, the the zy I, I know my zy is much less than much less than c so I know epsilon y is much less than my uh, the strain at the outer edge uh, so I can say that um, sigma y over e is much less than epsilon c so when I plug that into this equation uh, 1 minus, if I know that this is very small relative to this, this whole term kind of goes to 0, and I get 
something like this m is b sigma y c squared um, so I know uh, also in terms of my bending or my uh, my second moment of area this is three halves sigma y i over h over two so I know the beam is fully plastic now when my bending moment is um, is equal to this quantity and I know that these two now relate to each other so my my m not oh, not an m i um, I know that these two relate to each other m not over m i is equal to three halves so this is taking if I have an elastic perfectly plastic material um, I will start yielding the material or for any material I'll start yielding the material when the bending moment is equal to this quantity sigma y i over h over 2 and I will form a pure plastic hinge when that bending moment is 50 percent greater than the initial bending moment um, than the bending moment necessary to cause plasticity to, to come about um, yeah so this is kind of generally the few things that you need to know for uh, plastic bending that here when the beam starts to plastically deform there's an elastic region and some plastic region um, you'll form the plastic zone non-uniformly in the beam and it'll happen where the maximum moment is uh, eventually when the load gets too high you form a plastic hinge the relationship between bending moment and strain at the outer edge epsilon c uh, is this but really the two important cases that you need to know are when plasticity starts in the beam and that's when m is equal to sigma y i over h over 2 and you form a full plastic hinge when the bending moment is 50 percent greater than that when m naught over i is three halves this is again for an elastic perfectly plastic beam um, which is a big simplification but um, it works well enough and so that's in our beam that's when you're going from here from our initial state there's going to be some initial bending um, where there may be some plastic deformation but it'll still bounce back um, and then when I get a full plastic hinge and I'm able to just kind of bend the material around a point um, and the bending moment these are the bending moments necessary for that yeah so that's some notes on beam bending plasticity and again uh, I have nice clean written out notes for all of this that I will post uh, whenever I'm able to get to a scanner hopefully sometime on Wednesday um, all right